All right, let's mute it up. Here we go. All right, guys. It is time. Our, uh, one of our favorite, favorite punching bags. The biggest failure of 2024. Concord is back in the news. We got some extra information about how much this level of failure has costed Sony. It's an astounding number. Almost an unbelievable number. But we'll go over it. We'll go over the information that was gleaned today. Uh, we'll go over the source of it. We'll discuss the game itself. And we'll discuss why the number was so high. Uh, and what the implications are. We love Concord. Yeah, we love Concord. Best best game of 2024. No. Uh, so it's going to be an interesting time. Get ready. Strap on in. Uh, yeah, this, this is, uh, this is gonna be some astounding news. So this is a guy named Colin Moriarty. Um, he's worked in, uh, gaming news before. He's shared a whole bunch of stuff. He actually is one of the largest PlayStation podcasts. And, um, he has a lot of insider information. So that is our source here. That is our source here. Uh, Armgrim, welcome. We miss you, buddy. How, uh, it's been a long time. Hope you're doing good. Uh, and, um, yeah, so this is Colin Moriarty with some information with a bunch of other insiders in the PlayStation world. Concord wasn't terrible. It just wasn't better than what was out there already uh, and wasn't free to play. Uh, I, I disagree, actually. I I didn't play Concord, to be fair, but Concord did look terrible. And if you consider the cost, which we'll discuss in just a few moments, uh, scaleless, with the cost in mind, that cost makes it even worse. Like, without the cost, yeah, maybe it's not too bad, but, like, considering what it costs and considering the details involved, you're just like, okay, the game seems infinitely worse now. <laughs> kind of thing. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's, let's, uh, let's find out the information. I, when I heard the number, man, I was astounded. I was astounded. Not to be coy, but I want the, I want the source to talk about it. I want to talk about Concord. <clears throat> I wasn't going to ever talk about this game again. Yeah, yeah. Because who really gives a shit? However... And I don't do journalism really anymore, as you guys know, and we talk about this a lot. I was a journalist at one time, and I used to break a lot of stories, and these days I don't really grind like that. So the stories that I break these days are usually people, always, not usually, always people coming to me. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> someone who worked on Concord um, reached out to me, and I verified who this person was and went through all of that and talked to this person extensively. He talks about how much he talked to this person and so on and so forth. Um, but I want you to know from what I gleaned from this conversation, uh, it, it's, he seems very adamant that this source is accurate, is literally accurate. So I don't want to hear about some salty Sony fanboy saying who's the source. He's not going to reveal the source. OK, like you don't reveal the source when you have you know, such valuable information, such valuable insight that would get someone fired from every single future games job. Uh, so there's not going to be a source. But this guy is basically putting his reputation on the line about it. So it, it's it's pretty real. It's pretty real. Uh, like a lot, for a long time. Ooh. And uh, got some, I think, interesting information that I can share about Concord. Um, and... Uh, I think people will be interested about it. The reason that I wanted to talk about it is because some of the assumptions that I had made about the game yeah. were dead wrong. Yeah. As far as how much it cost and how much Sony really lost on it. And, and this is important to note because when we talk about these failures of games, of whatever kind they are, um, it is always important to note that a lot of times when we estimate, we're underestimating. And so when we estimated the cost of Star Wars Outlaws, when we estimated the cost here of Concord, and so on and so forth, generally, we don't really know the full cost unless that information is revealed by the games company, which they really don't want to do. They don't like sharing that information because no one wants to know, sorry, they don't want anyone else to know the extent of their failures. Because if we do know, that directly affects their stock price. And there's nothing more that these uh, publicly traded games companies care about more than their stock prices. So this is this is a rare insight 
for some real information. And Noble Girl Gamer, how you doing, my friend? Good to see you guys. Give a warm welcome to Noble Girl. Arngrim, how are you doing tonight, by the way? Hope you're having a lovely, lovely weekend. Start your weekend. Happy Friday. Lovely Noble Girl Gamer. Absolutely, absolutely. Welcome, welcome. By the way, Scalus, you talked about Concord. Did you actually play Concord out of curiosity? Because I don't know if anyone in our community particularly was able to play Concord. I know I didn't get the chance. I, I, I wasn't going to pay $50 to get in the early access or anything. That sounded like a, that sounded like a terrible, terrible idea for me. Dude, games companies obfuscate their financials uh, as much as they possibly can, usually scaleless. They, they, sometimes you can find out um, and you can like extrapolate information. Uh, sometimes certain companies uh, do, do give like the real information. Um, and uh, like Embracer Group did actually give a lot of information considering their size. I think they were kind of required to uh, through audits and stuff. But unless they're like being audited and stuff, a lot of these game companies obfuscate the information as much as possible. They'll say, you know, this set of games costs a certain amount of money, for example, right? And you don't know how much did this specific game cost uh, and, and so on and so forth. But yeah, uh, presumably they've had several million dollars deferred costs in their balance sheet for the last uh, few years. Um, that's if you can get access to their financials. A lot of them don't give you access to their financials and a lot of them have things under groupings. So yeah, uh, that, that's that's kind of like how a lot of these game companies do it. Which is why like, basically, okay, here's context. All of us in the games world, as in me, as in, you know, uh, uh, people like IGN, Bellular, uh, you know, all of us reporters, uh, whether we're official or unofficial, obviously I'm not an actual reporter. I'm just a YouTuber uh, and a content creator. And I, I, I just, you know, work in business so i have an insight to these things but also uh we're and, you know i'm just creating content and we're just trying to you know do this out of passion out of love of the game as the uh as the as the as the meme and saying goes uh but uh our estimates pretty much universally was 50 to 100 million dollars some of us thought 200 million and i think i estimated 100 to 150 that was my estimate. Guys, we were all wrong. I, I, I will, we'll, we'll reveal the number, the number here in just a moment. But we were all, every single one of us, wrong. And we undershot, Scaleless. We undershot. We're not overshooting. We undershot the number. So the big thing that you really need to know here yeah. about this is that um, Concord costs about $400 million to Four hundred million dollars. That is almost half a billion dollars. Four hundred million dollars, guys. This is this is this is unironically completely one of not one of actually I think it might take the cake. The literal biggest failure in gaming ever. The biggest cost of a Sony game ever. Because, like, dude, Spider-Man 2, which was horrendously expensive, costed, like, $200 million to make, right? Um, we, we have, like, numbers for other games that, that are made by Sony. A lot of the other failed live service games, Suicide Squad, Kill the Justice League, that was, like, $150 million. Um, looking over uh, Redfall, that was, like, $100 million. They're, like, a lot of these, um, a lot of the failed uh, games that our live service games usually cost in the ballpark of 100 to 150. So that's why we all assumed 100 to 150, because that's like, you know, kind of like the universal number of what these games generally cost. This is twice, over twice that number, $400 million. They could have made three different Spider-Man 2 games. They could have made, you know, two different Final Fantasy VII remakes. Like that, that, that is like the balance of what this number means, what this number entails. This is disgusting. This number is disgusting. And this also shows that Jim Ryan, who is the CEO at the time of, of uh, uh, Sony that uh, invested so much money in these failed live service games, he deserved the boot that he got, man. He's fired. He deserved every second of it. Like, holy crap. I hope he never gets a job again. Like this, this is a financial failure of a different level, man.
Like, I don't think I've ever seen a gaming financial failure this big ever. Ever. And I've been playing games since the very beginning of gaming. So, yeah, that's... That is uh, that is my take on the number already. Like, oh my god, have you guys ever heard of a larger failure? If you have, or if you have heard of comparable number of any kind of financial failure in gaming, leave a comment below. Uh, I love discussing these things. Yeah. Oh my god. They can't even and, believe it. Um, they cannot even believe it, man. The story goes that Concord, <laughs> by the time Concord was. So in the first quarter of 2023, Concord had basically entered an alpha state. Right. This was before right. we knew Sony that. had even purchased the team. Uh, but Sony had been working with um, probably monsters. We, we knew this after the fact because we knew that the game was an alpha. Sony meets with the team, probably monsters making uh, or fire, sorry, Firewalk Studios making the game. And they loved the game so much that they decided to buy the entire company of the makers of Concord, by the entire Firewalk Studios and envelop them into Sony, saying that this is going to be the next big hit. This is going to be the big thing here. That's the history. So that's that's why we're talking about 2023. Uh, Skill says there seems to be a pattern of good games which just aren't better than what's out already, so they fail. The finals isn't nearly as good as Apex. X Defiant uh, isn't nearly as good as COD. Grey Zone isn't nearly as good as Tarkov. Um, Halo Infinite. Um, I disagree on some of these, by the way. Grey Zone Warfare sold 1 million copies. Grey Zone Warfare sold 1 million copies as a much smaller game. That's not a failure in any way, shape, or form. Some people don't like it as much as Tarkov. Like, I don't like it as much as Tarkov. It's a completely different feel. It is not really, like, fully an extraction shooter. It is a uh, very much like a PvE-style game. Uh, it has some PvP elements, but it's much more a PvE game. It's definitely an early access. Like, it's definitely, like, they don't have, like, all, a lot of their features fleshed out yet. It's, it's still in a, a really good place for where it is right now. But it even still sold 1 million copies. That game, not a failure. Especially considering its cost. It has a considerable cost, but it's not nearly the level of, like, this or anything like that. And, and, and that's, that's one thing to remember. A lot of times, a game is a financial failure, not because of the numbers of copies it sells. Sometimes it is, like Concords. Concord didn't sell pretty much any copies at all. But uh, a lot of games become failures because of their astronomical cost compared to their relative numbers, smaller numbers than expected of sales. Uh, uh, case in point, um, Final Fantasy 16, a game that we played on this channel, a game that I love. Uh, Final Fantasy 16 is a very quality game. I like it a lot. Never finished it, but we played it for a considerable number, I think like 25 hours on stream. And someday we'll go back to it and finish it. Final Fantasy 16 was considered a financial failure by Square Enix. They're very public about this. And what this is one of their big reasons why they don't want to any longer be exclusive just to PlayStation. And like the PC numbers aren't selling too well because everyone's kind of experienced the game already like, uh, what is it, almost a year ago that Final Fantasy 16 came out. So no one's really buying the game in, in high numbers on PC. Still selling pretty decently, but it's not like, you know, a gigantic, because like it's a lot of times you want a universal launch to be able to have everyone buy the game at the same time. No one has spoilers. No one's watching the random YouTuber play it. And then they don't want to buy it themselves and so on and so forth for these kind of story-like style games. Regardless, Square Enix definitely considers that a failure. And it still sold millions of copies. It just costed so much to make because the graphical fidelity is so high and the development time is so high and everything like that, that they still consider it a financial failure, even though it was in the green. So that's just an example. Uh, a couple of hundred million dollar uh, uh, plus failures. Oh, yeah, no, exactly. Oh, absolutely. Uh, yeah, Immortals of Avium. Yep, exactly. Undawn. I don't know Undawn. So Concord, $400 million. Ryan, did you hear the number? $400 million, dude, for this fucking abject failure for sony but anyways and which was the original owner of firewalk and firewalk yeah um probably since late 2020 maybe 2021 at the latest on the fact that they bought entire firewalk studios when it was in pre-alpha is astounding to me like oh my god i don't know how sony looked at footage of concord in pre-alpha which is not even the release date. We're talking like really early state of Concord. 
and they decided this game is good enough to spend millions and hundreds of millions of dollars on to push through the finish line to launch. Like, that is crazy, dude. That is crazy. Concord, the game was in development before that. Up to the point that the game went into alpha state, um, they had already spent about $200 million on it. Yeah. And it's unclear how much of that money is from probably monsters and the original investors into the game and how much of that money was from Sony. So up until the alpha state of the game, it already costed $250 million. Sorry, $200 million. Which means after they bought Firewalk Studios in 2023 in the early alpha state, it took another $200 million of cost to take it from alpha state to launch in 2024. That is crazy. They spent $200 million from Alpha State of Concord to the release one month ago. What in the world? Oh my God. Oh my God. Um, there's this term in, in product development, uh, not only with games, but really with everything. You can like manufacture a tchotchke. You guys might have heard of it. It's called minimum minimum viability or yeah. minimal minimum. Uh, uh, minimum viable product is what he's saying. This is a term in business. So that is basically when you know you have something that you can actually sell on the market. So a minimum vi viable product for a game is when you're selling it as a um, as as the base state of the game before the day one patch and everything like that. You're just like, all right, this is good enough to sell. Uh, now, arguably, I would state that a lot of game companies have forgotten what minimum viable product means because we've seen how many broken, completely disgustingly horrendous launch products of video games in the past two years, if not more. Like, oh my God, we've had so many games that are on day one, completely broken, abject messes. It took six months plus for Dragon's Dogma 2 to finally get optimization on PC to even make that a minimum viable product for thousands of people. And I haven't even tested it, so I don't even know if it's still, if it's even a minimal viable product for someone like us. It's just, it's just crazy. Uh, you mean MVP, baby? Yeah, yeah, yeah. MVP. Minimum viable product. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. The most valuable player minimum viable product yeah same same acronym exactly exactly a viable product yeah mm -hmm. the idea behind this or mvp the, the idea go. behind this is that this is like what you're trying to achieve and it's like once yeah. you cross this barrier you yeah. feel comfortable selling it it's not it's not even a good game at that point it's 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 a pre-order game at that point guys it is it is a pre-order game at that point that it's the best it can be or that it's what it's going to be by the time you launch it because there's all sorts of extra stuff you do to it but like this is the minimum viability of the product um when the game had already had 200 million dollars spent on it and was basically in an alpha form in qu quarter one of 2023 yeah from that point until the game launched sony spent another 200 million dollars on it. yeah yeah we we just did that math i think that everyone involved in Concord at Sony, all of the executives need to be fired. And and uh, I'll tell you a little story. <laughs> my my dad, my dad owned a business um, like 15 years ago. And um, it, it, the, the guy made a, a gigantic blunder, like millions of dollars worth of blunder at a construction company. And, and this cost my dad this almost had to made him have to shutter the company. And um, so the guy comes in and he explains the problem and and everything. And my dad is like, I have to fire you. And and the guy's like, why, why are you firing me? And my dad answers, because we're in America and I can't kill you. So I feel like this is like a blunder of that level almost just straight up. Like, I, I definitely feel like every single person, every single executive, like Jim Ryan has definitely been fired for this. Like this is this is the giant reason, four hundred million dollars from Sony just for this one product, not even counting the hundreds of millions for every other failed life service that Jim Ryan at Sony pushed forth 
to be like the next big thing at Sony instead of like making good games. They made like, you know, live service tripe failure after failure after failure after failure after failure. I think that every single executive needs to be fired because it wasn't just Jim Ryan. Like, let's be real. Like Jim Ryan definitely was the main guy. He is the CEO. He's the guy at the top. I'm glad he got fired. But every single executive, they need to examine. They need to do a straight up audit. Like I do consulting. That's that's a big part of what I do in my business. And anytime there's a failure of like infinitely smaller magnitude, like you have to have heads roll for anyone who thought this was a good idea for something like this, like a, just a sheer abject fail. I'm not talking about like, oh yeah, you know, we, we missed the target a little bit. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking $400 million. Any other company having that loss would have to close its doors. Sony is lucky that it is so huge that it can, it can still function by taking this loss. Like this is ridiculous. I mean, who won't do it again? Uh, so far, you never know. This could be next time where, you know, another company hires the ex-CEO of Sony, which is a pretty big thing to have on your resume. Uh, that was a joke. I know. It, it, I'm just saying, though, the, the reality of the situation, these executives, even when they get fired, a lot of times another company will hire them for just totally fine. Just hunky-dory. Oh, yeah, you know, what's the chances it'll happen twice? The chances are pretty fucking high. Usually when a you CEO fucks up once, they're going to fuck up again. <laughs> like, genuinely, they don't often stop fucking up. They're usually fuck-ups in their head at that point. And it's just like, dude, what the hell is going on? Like, either they, they think they're invincible or they don't realize, um, you know, a certain, like, key aspect as in, like, you know, making a good product. A lot, a lot of uh, CEOs don't believe in that anymore. Uh, there, there, there's, there's a lot of major issues. And yeah, Artosh makes up a, a good point. Why did they spend another $200 million? It's because they bought Firewalk Studios, already spent $200 million, and decided that they are needing to throw good money after bad at this point. And they don't want to like take the hit of $200 million, especially when they believed in the game so much. And so they decided to take it all the way and spend another $250 million, sorry, $200 million as a, uh, a, a sunk cost fallacy. And, and, and guys, what is the, what is the operative word in sunk cost fallacy? Fallacy. It's, it is not a good idea to do. You don't want to do the sunk cost fallacy. It's, it's a bad idea. So yeah, exactly. A lot of times, like, um, you know, when, uh, what was it? Hyenas by Sega and CA. Uh, that, that game was an utter failure and they spent a hundred million dollars. Can you imagine if they spent another hundred million dollars? They nearly had to shutter certain games like Total War Warhammer 3 and they almost ruined it forever. Almost. They, they, they turned that ship around. But imagine if they hadn't cut off the cost being like, all right, you know what? We wasted a hundred million dollars. This game is fucking dog shit. We can't release this game. Imagine if they hadn't cho chosen that road. And they had spent another $50 million. And then Hyenas comes out. It's an abject failure. And then, you know, Total War Warhammer 3 is dead. Uh, you know, every single other CA game, every single other, like, uh, you know, Total War game, every single other freaking, uh, you know, all the other Warhammer games that they come out with and so on. And, and everything is just dead. It's just a domino system that just has a cascading failure effect where the entire company is just dead. Like, that could have happened to Sony. Sorry, uh, uh, Sega. Uh, if they had spent a little bit more money. Absolutely, absolutely. It's crazy, it's crazy. The scuttlebutt behind the scenes about Concord is that the game was in a laughable shape. <clears throat> yeah. Um, when it was shown. It's an alpha, this makes sense to me. Also, when the game launched, it was in a laughable state. We covered it extensively. It was, I, I don't know why anyone spent money on it. So yeah. This makes sense that uh, uh, literally 2023, uh, uh, over a year and nine months ago, it was in a much worse state. And ready, basically like when the alpha okay. was ready to go yeah. and they were kind of being like, you know, we're ready to kind of get moving towards getting this thing out in the next year or two. It just sucked. It was in such horrible shape that Sony felt like they needed to spend that much money again. So, you know, 200 plus 200 
to get the the game to to the MVP status, not to the status of it being like a great game to get it to oh just viability. Oh my and god! And that at that time in quarter one, twenty twenty three, this was is such insane. A, there was nothing done. <laughs> like a major expense was having to urgently outsource much of the game to other studios to finish. The two hundred million dollar cost between twenty twenty three and now makes more sense. By the way, guys, with this. Because anytime you have to outsource these types of things to be rushed to finish or rushed to the MVP, the minimum viable product, and so on and so forth, you are paying a premium. You are paying extra money than it costs to normally develop the product. You are paying above the cost. So yeah, this makes more sense. I was I was wondering. I was I was wondering, guys. Yeah, okay. Makes a little bit more sense now building the game out oh god and that two fundamental things were not worked on at all up to the point in which the game was shown in alpha this is insane onboarding nothing about that no like there was nothing about how players get on like how they make their character all that kind of stuff or you know choose their character and get there so the, the beginning of the game just did not exist in any semblance C character creation you know player account creation up like that's crazy how how is the beginning of the game not in the game in the alpha like at that point it's a vertical slice almost and monetization. It's just a set of assets oh and monetize now now they, they'd be really pissed off about now monetization by itself it may not sound like a big thing but game companies spend millions and millions why do you think i'm always upset when a game like dark tide comes out and the only correct thing in the game or like the only well-made product in the game is the cash shop how many times has a broken game come out and the only thing working in the game is the fucking cash shop it happens a lot and the reason that pisses me off is because guys you don't know how much it takes to make a cash shop to make the assets in the cash shop to make the products being sold in the cash shop to set up all of the you know the infrastructure to do the sales and such it casts it costs tens of millions of dollars sometimes for a really big game. These are expensive aspects of the game. Very expensive. So, yeah, this this is making a lot of sense now. I hate this. I hate Two everything about this. Very expensive, very specific and boutique things that happen to games like this. Yeah. Um and so that's the first thing that I wanted to say is that it's not only about the ongoing cost which would be in the millions <clears throat> to keep the game going per month. Right. Right. But that the game cost yeah. about 400 million dollars to make. And, and like like I said, by the way, guys, this is the most expensive failure in gaming so far. Keep in mind, we can always do worse. I think we sh I think, you know what, guys, I've listened to a lot of shit eaters from Sony talking about the PS5 Pro and so on and so forth. I've realized that at its core, Sony players a lot of times deserve what they get. I think Sony should do worse. I, I think they need to try to do work. I think they can, I believe in them. I believe in them. I think they can do one wrong worse at least. Like, dude, I, I, I'm going to be their cheerleader, guys. You can do better. So I would say, dude, shoot for the moon. Give us a $500 million failure next year. Come on, man. You can do it, Sony. I believe in you, bro. I believe in you sincerely. To nuts. Sony put most of that money in and <laughs> oh um, it is not only so because we had kind of said like this must be Sony's biggest loss ever on a game and it is it's the again caveat so far what is it we always say about these things so far worst game ever made so far worst monetization from an Ubisoft game ever for Rainbow Six Siege so far Star Wars Outlaws is, you know, the most disappointing game of 2024 so far. <laughs> it's, it can always get worse. It can always get worse. But yeah, like I said, so far. The biggest game Sony's ever released from a budgetary standpoint. Again, so far. I, I, I think they can do better, guys. I sincerely believe in Sony's capacity to make a larger fuck up. I don't think anyone should underestimate them at this point. Like, don't underestimate that, man. We underestimated them three weeks ago. That's why we thought the failure was $100 million.
boy, howdy, were we wrong? The first party or second party. Oh so my god! Let that sink in. Yeah. It's oh, it's sunk in, and it's totally unintuitive. There are more. There are games that are in development right now at Sony first and second party that are more expensive than this. But as of the games that have come out so far, which which game is more expensive than four hundred million dollars? Genuinely, because this this is like a perfect storm of shit to make the cost into what it is. Like I don't I don't want you guys to you know get it twisted. This is like this is like a once in a generation thing. Like this is the largest gaming failure ever. I cannot think of a single gaming failure that is larger than this period. And I'm talking about like systems fucking up. Like just straight up. Like this is the largest ever. Um I I honestly can't think of a single game that could cost more. Like again, Marvel's uh Spider-Man 2 was $200 million for development costs. And that game was expensive. That game was huge. It was a su successful game. Now, bear in mind, but uh, it was it was a huge game. Uh, Marvel's Avengers was like $100, $150 million. Like, that, that's like the cost of these extremely large games. What is $400 million? Like, maybe Wolverine? Like, that game seems to be gigantic. But I can't think of any other. Like Halo Infinite costed 150. Now that game was gigantic. Yeah, this is I I man, I hope he goes in this. Like I would love to know what game is larger than four hundred million dollars. So think about like Spider-Man two. Right. And so on and so forth. We know the last of us part two cost two hundred and twenty million dollars. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, two two twenty million. Uh Last of Us Part Two was at the time one of the largest games ever. Oh, GTA. But GTA is not Sony property at all. It's, GTA is like, you know, everything. Like, it's their own company, um, uh, uh, Rockstar. So, yeah, GTA, I think, is going to cost maybe almost a billion dollars, I would say. I would say that'd be cutting it close to, like, a billion level. And, and like, we don't know the extent of that. We don't know what the exact costs are for that or anything like that. But that that game is probably the most expensive game ever made. This is the most expensive Sony game for sure. Spider Man Two. Spider Man Three is going to cost about three hundred and fifty million dollars. Yeah, Spider Man Two was two fifty, or I thought two hundred to two fifty. Spider Man Three is three fifty. That's still not more than four hundred. This game cost more than that, and they lost all of it. Yeah, all of it. They made gone. no money. They made about a million dollars gross revenue. Uh. uh Yes, but they had to give that back. One of the only W's in this entire situation is the fact that Sony gave back all of the money it made, which was only a million dollars, which wasn't much. It was like literal dog shit change. Um, and, and they gave that back to every consumer that spent any money on this dog shit game. So really, they did not make a million dollars. That money was refunded. They made nothing. And then they gave it all back. So yeah. this is oh, a okay. huge, yeah, yeah. You multiple right. hundreds of millions of dollar loss. Yeah. Now, the question is, why? Why did this happen? Oh. Because every single executive needs to be fired and they haven't been fired yet. Every single one of them. They all need to be gone yesterday. That's my take, but let's see what he says. There's probably more information here. Absolutely. And I, I can't wait to find out with you guys. This game was heavily championed okay. behind the scenes. Yeah. Now we know this because Sony ended up. What's funny is that the game is presented in this in Q1 2023 in, as, as a this, broken game. You know, yeah. we're kind of getting towards the end. The game is nowhere near being done. It's in yeah. a horrible position. And then Sony buys the team. Yeah. The I they see the game being dog shit and they decided, you know what? We're all in. <laughs> Sounds like a great idea. The idea behind this was and the term apparently verbatim had been used that Concord is the future of PlayStation. Jesus. That they had such major Jesus. ambition for this game that it was referred to internally as a... Well, technically, they weren't wrong. It was the future of Sony. The future largest failure of Sony. And if this failure, if this had been any other company, 
this would have been the future of Sony or the future of whatever game company making this level of failure in terms of the fact that it would have killed the company. So I, I guess technically they're not wrong. But they're really wrong. Or they're really not right in any way they want to be. Star Wars like <laughs> project say. for Sony. That Star Wars. It can be repeated. Now, now, Star Wars like Star Wars or Star Wars like the Acolyte? Because from what they're saying, it seems like it's Star Wars like the Acolyte. <laughs> there we go. Re ...revisited over and over and over again. Not only like Boba media, Fett. but in what we were seeing. We've already kind of seen little bits of it. So the weekly story vignettes that they were going to release. And right. then, of course, the inclusion in Amazon's... And, and I guess now we know why the animations are so good because the animations were outsourced and the animations had millions of dollars each put into it. That animation, when, when we first saw that animation at the, at the first announcement at the PlayStation state of play, it was given like the moment of honor, the first game shown at the Sony state of play last year, or sorry, earlier this year. Uh, it was given the, the moment of honor, the first freaking game. That animation was really good. Like, that was a high-quality animation. You could see the hairs on their head. You could see every single detail. They had motion capture, facial capture, great voice acting. And, and then they, re they announced that it was a hero shooter, and you're like, what the fuck are you thinking? But yeah, each one of those animations costed millions of dollars. Absolutely. Beyond a doubt. That level of quality costs Riot Games millions of dollars each time. Every single time we get one of those, like, you know, pepping us up for the next season of playing dog shit League of Legends and so on and so forth. I hate that game. I love it at the same time. You guys know me. But every single time they release one of those, each one of those animations is millions of dollars. Yeah, th this, this would be a recurring cost for them every single time they had a vignette release for Concord. And they'd release like four of them by the time the game had died. Um, Secret Levels anthology, that's like just Ooh. scratching. That's the Netflix show. For anyone who doesn't know, there's like, I think like a Netflix, I think it's Netflix or Amazon. It's a uh, big special where they're looking at like 10 iconic games. <laughs> Granted, I guess Concord is iconic, iconically bad. But yeah, uh, they, they had to like, you know, talk about the development. They did all this like, almost like a marketing pitch, except for the fact that Concord is dead. The surface of it. Ironically, the game was codenamed Chaos behind the scenes. Oh, God. And that is a very bad sign. If I ever call a project Chaos, it's not like. It's not like Chaos, as you know, it from Twitter or Twitch, where someone calls themselves a chaotic VTuber or whatever. No, this is bad. This is not a good thing. This is a misnomer in like 99.99% .99 of cases. You don't want to be called chaos. You don't want to. You don't want to call a project chaos or chaotic. That this is bad. This is this means it's a shit show. Um, a major thing about the game is that there okay. was, and I think we can kind of get this vibe from just the nature of the people making it and kind of the way the game reads and all that. Okay, a toxic positivity vibe. I can tell you for a fact this is completely right because Jim Ryan himself, he was. It is very, I think it was, there was a public statement given by, you know, leaks about Jim Ryan leading to him being fired. Basically, people would talk about problems with the game of uh, Concord and like, hey, we need to get this fixed. We need to get that fixed. And Jim Ryan would be like, no, nah, don't worry. We're going to come together and it's just going to work. Don't worry. We got this. And they didn't. They didn't got this. They didn't have this at all. They didn't make it like it was it was one of those situations where sometimes you got to sit down, be honest about it, have self-reflection, be like, yeah, we have some serious issues. Having a toxic positivity mindset is like something that I think is way too common in gaming, especially in like game fans. Nowadays, if I release a video where I'm talking about the state of Dragon Age Veilguard. And this is not an example that I'm pulling out of my out of my ass. We've made like three videos on it so far about Dragon Age Veilguard and the serious issues with the game. And I will get comments, I'll get DMs from people being like, oh my God, Cap, you're being so negative. Oh my God, why, why are you being so mean? Because I want the game to succeed. If I'm talking about a game and talking about its flaws, 
and talking about how it can be fixed, giving feedback. I'm not calling the game dog shit, ha ha, let's laugh at it. That is not how most people give negative feedback. Now, that's how Twitter takes it nowadays, because they're shit eaters. But beyond the shit eaters taking it this way, every single person who gives us feedback wants the game to be better. You know, Wolfhard FPS gave a very lackluster review of his gameplay of the, of the game, of Veilguard, not because he's shitting on the game. He's a very positive guy in general. He's a really nice guy. He wants the game to be better. He wants these issues to be fixed. He wants these things to get better as the game goes on. You know, the, the viability of various character classes and, you know, the narrative product and so on and so forth. Like, very important aspects of the game. We are talking about how we want it to be better. Nothing kills a game faster than apathy, except maybe toxic positivity. Because I'll always remember, when a game is coming out and the entire games industry, the games journalism, uh, IGN and everyone, why is it such an issue for them to give a game like uh, Star Wars Outlaws a 7 out of 10? Because the game is not a 7 out of 10. So if I read this and I'm not in the know, and I'm not Cap Corky who covers these games as a, a literal like passion project and loves creating content, if I'm just a random Joe Schmo, and, uh, you know, I'm relatively interested in Star Wars, I'm like, yeah, you know, Outlaw, being an outlaw sounds fun. All right, let's, let's see what IGN thinks. Oh, 7 out of 10? That's pretty good. Yeah, I'm going to spend money on this product. And you buy it for that reason? you're going to go in with a level of expectation. And then you're going to play the game and realize the game is nowhere near 7 out of 10. It's more like a 4 or 5 out of 10. And as a result, you're going to be more pissed than if you read correct reviews of a game and realize, okay, it's more of like a 5 game, and maybe I'll buy it on sale. And if I buy it on sale, it'll be like, you know, I'll be less pissed. When I buy a game on sale for 90% off on Steam, and it ends up being dog shit, but, you know, enjoyable in, like, two or three different aspects. And I get, like, a solid, like, you know, five, ten hours of enjoyment out of the game, even if, like, overall the product wasn't really worth full price. I only spent, you know, 10% of the cost on it. I'm happy with the game at that point. Why was everyone very happy with Helldivers 2 when it came out and it only had, you know, very repetitious gameplay that is a cooperative game? And no one was really asking, hey, we want single player story mode. Hey, we want this. Hey, we want PvP. No one was really asking this. Why? Because the game was only 30 bucks. So for what we spent on the game, 30 bucks, we are very happy with the product. It is in line with expectations. And I think gaming has a toxic positivity problem in general now. I would state that it is maybe the largest universal problem that gaming as a whole has in terms of gamers have this problem in terms of game makers have this problem in terms of games journalism has this problem it's a universal problem people are too toxically positive i'm not saying shit on a game you know willy-nilly but i'm saying that anytime we levy any kind of you know viable critical feedback in even very good ways everyone yells us down why the fuck is that? It's, they're asking to be disappointed. They're asking to eat bowls of shit from whatever game maker and then having a worse and worse product. And, and that's how we end up with games like Concord. That's how we get, end up with games like Dustborn. That's how we end up with games like freaking Star Wars Outlaws. That This is how. This is how we end up with Assassin's Creed Shadows, which we covered last night in great detail, looking at all of the myriad of issues. Dude, I bet you fucking money IGN is going to give that a 7 out of 10. It's insane, and it's because of toxic positivity and uh, g access gaming journalism. That as well. All of a sudden, you have game uh, 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 reviewers that are reviewing a product that they're essentially incentivized to give a good score to. Because if they don't, they're going no matter, no matter how good or bad the product is. Because if they don't, they're worrying about their ability to cover the next game. Ubisoft, EA, all these companies do this nowadays. That's why IGN gives 7 out of 10s to dog shit games weeks before the game comes out. They're basically required to. It's, it's the understated requirement. That's why Ubisoft, you know, calls out a whole bunch of players uh, and, and, you know, content creators and stuff to come over to Paris and then takes them to Disney World, bribes them with like a literal Disney World ticket and shit. Disney World Paris, and then they play the game with, like, you know, good fuzzy feelings. 
And then all of a sudden they like the game a little bit more. It's extremely coercive and incredibly, incredibly toxic for the trust of all gamers. It is incredibly a very negative, um, uh, what's, what's the word I'm looking for? It, it, is a, it is a very trust eroding practice, a non-positive uh, 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 consumer focus. It's a negative consumer focus. Sorry, words are hard. You weren't allowed to say anything. Yeah. Apparently internally about this game. Yeah, and this is happening internally. About how like something's wrong with it. Character designs are not right. Right. Um, and guess what? If you can't say character designs are wrong, then you will have bad character designs. If you state that... Hold on, let me pull up the uh, the tab for this. If you state that this character design is good, you are part of the problem. If you are not allowed to state that this character design is dog shit, that this character makes no sense, he doesn't look interesting, he doesn't look like I would want to buy a skin for this character because it's a live service game. And if you're shouted down internally in the company, I know companies do this, where if you state that, hey, <laughs> this, is, this is a bad product, and you're being completely honest, they'll call you sexist, they'll call you racist, they'll call you this, they'll call you that, they'll call you toxic. And, and, and then you'll like get a visit from HR and you might lose your job. All of a sudden, you're not going to say these things anymore. And then you end up with a worse product. And you're not saying it because you think this character is a, you know, a piece of shit or whatever. You just want it to be a better product. Like, that's, that's all it is. It's insane that we've been gaslighting game makers to make worse products now all of a sudden. We've been gaslighting game creators uh, uh, to, to do so. We've been gaslighting games journalism to like basically be toxically positive or they don't get access to the next game. We've been gaslighting, you know, freaking YouTubers and, and Twitch streamers and stuff to be extra, extra positive. Otherwise, they won't get their 100,000 views on a game that they're able to play fucking five days before the game comes out. Getting a leg up on everyone else. Only The only thing they have, to have to do is sell their soul and give the game a positive review, whether it deserves it or not. I fucking hate this shit. Every single time. It is every fucking game. And now a lot of times, you know, sometimes you can find a, a game creator that you trust. Luke Stevens Live is, is one that I watch regularly, and he's, he's a great creator. And uh, he basically, Josh Ripay is another example. And he requires that any time he gives, you know, um, a, a preloaded product or like, uh, uh, no, sorry, uh, a, a, a pre-release review or something like that, he is allowed to say contractually, that the game is dog shit if it's dog shit. And if he's not allowed to say that, then he doesn't go to the event. Then he doesn't cover the game. He puts his money where his fucking mouth is, both these guys. And, and, but they're the rarity. Most creators on YouTube, most of the streamers that you watch do not do that. If they're pre, if they're, uh, you know, doing a pre-release of a game, if they're a sponsored product or whatever, they're usually contractually obligated to not call the game dog shit. Do not be honest about the game. And and that's a huge problem. That is a huge problem. That cat of welcome, my friend. We're we're cooking. We're cooking. And uh definitely I will put this up on YouTube, so hopefully you'll be able to catch it then. Absolutely as well. Welcome, welcome to Stream Taikato. We're talking about Concord. It costed four hundred million dollars to make, by the way, Taikato. So I'm I'm you know going a little bit in on the game's world as well and so on and so forth. But welcome to stream. How was your night, my friend? We've been on for a solid four hours. You did a lot of gameplay as well. And so on and so forth. They yeah. really, truly believe this is Herman Hulse's baby, apparently. Okay, who is Herman Hulse? Now, I know Jim Ryan. Who is Herman Hulse? Oh, he's the new CEO. Okay. Yeah. We're going we're gonna to look at this guy. Not right now. We're going to look at this uh, later. He's Dutch. Was he involved in Embracer Group? I'm curious if he was involved in Embracer Group. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to read about Herman Hulse later. Because if he is idiotic enough to champion and call Concord his baby, boy, howdy. Uh, Thaikata, we, we learned some details about those devs, so yeah. Yeah, maybe, uh, 
you know, it might, it might change your opinion on that aspect of it a little bit. Like, I know everyone feels sorry for the devs and I do feel sorry for like the coders. There's certain aspects of this game that are well-made and so on and so forth. But in general, I mean, really, this is a universal level fuck up. Like, truly. Not everyone deserved the axe by any means whatsoever. But the fact is that this game, Thaikato, was codenamed Chaos behind the scenes. That's not a good thing. The entire game company of Firewalk Studios and, you know, all the executives that dealt with them from Sony were toxically positive about the game. And they weren't allowed to say a single negative aspect of the game. They weren't able to call a character design dog shit or whatever. And like, hey, we got to work on this. They weren't allowed to say that. When that happens, I feel less bad for the devs. Like, genuinely. And I'm, I'm not, you know, sir, I'm not saying every one of them deserved it. By any means, no. The sound design in that game, I heard the game, was great. Every sound design dev in that game deserves a medal. Every animator on that game deserves a medal. They did pretty good with the animations and so on and so forth. Those guys did great. They, they were in a, a really bad situation and they, and they were able to still do some good stuff. But in general, not so much. Not so much. And he internally was, it was himself a massive champion of the game. So it's not that, so the reason I'm telling you all of this, it's some interesting information, of course, but it's that I had said when people were like, Concord uh, lost $200 million. Now yeah. people were pulling that money out because that's basically how much like some of the first party games like Ghost of Tsushima, The Last of Us Part Two, et cetera, kind of cost in that frame. Right. And I was like, there's no way that it costs that much. I, I was saying like, it costs nine figures probably, like low $100 million, but there's no way it costs $200 million. Everyone thought it was $100 million level failure. Everyone thought this. The, the fact that it costed $400 million is insane. And, and I'll break down the numbers of why it now makes sense. Knowing, I mean, hindsight and everything like that. We'll, we'll be able to cover it. No, it costs $400 million. Yeah. So, and I am totally solid on this source, by the way. Yeah. So that's why I'm willing to share it with you. because it... he's, he's putting his entire reputation on the line. That's how much he believes in this issue. I'm not really a journalist. So yeah, yeah the big things to take away, $400 million loss. That's how you know he's honest. He's not really a journalist, guys. That's how you know I'm honest. I'm not really a journalist. I'm not being paid to do this. I will give you the authentic take, good, bad, or ugly, no matter what it is. Why? Because I just want a good fucking game. Like, Really, at its core, if you're following people that were toxically positive about a game like Star Wars Outlaws, not calling it dog shit when it's dog shit, Concord, acting like it's going to be a good game when it's not, saying that they've played it and it's quality that deserves better, blah, 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 all that bullshit gaslighting, stop following them. Follow better creators. Follow ones there are out there. People like Luke Stevens is a really big one. If you want to follow big ones, I'll recommend you big ones. I just like having good information out there. Bellular, great source. He never fucking lies. Luke Stevens, never fucking lies. Josh Tripes, never fucking lies. None of those people lie. They're huge creators. Much bigger than I ever will be, probably. But me, I'm just a small guy. But I will also still only ever give you the authentic take. Why? Because me, just like those other guys I mentioned, all we want is a good fucking game. That's it. We are in it for the love of the game. Young Yeah? Uh, I mean, Young Yeah in general is pretty good, but I wouldn't say he's like a 100% perfect. Like, Young Yeah was literally a voice actor in several games. So you cannot trust someone with that level of bias in games, in my opinion. And I like it. We watch Young Yeah. And, you know, I'll call it when he does it right, and he does it right many times. But he's he's been wrong about certain things for sure. And not, I'm not talking about mistake wrong. I'm talking about, like, purposely wrong. Yeah. I, I won't say Young Yaz always right by any means whatsoever. Someone who's in the industry that level, a lot of times, does have skin in the game, does have, like, you know, connections with people like Jeff Keighley. He was, you know, and, and he was not very, uh, let's just say, real about Jeff Keighley's issues when that happened as well. Like, they're, they're, he's he's been particularly wrong about certain things because of these same reasons. He doesn't want to mess up his insider information and so on and so forth. So yeah, I, I do not count Young Yan on that list as a universal, like, 
this guy you can generally like 99% of the time trust. I'm talking about these people. Like that level, it's like Bellular, Josh Rye Pays, uh, you know, uh, Luke Stevens Live, uh, so on and so forth. There, there, there's, there's a few others for sure. But Luality, Luality is very niche. She only really covers RPGs and Souls, but she's very correct on her information. Like she, she gives it to you straight. Like there, there are other creators out there for sure. But yeah, yeah, I would not count Young Yaz a hundred percent perfect. Now, nowadays, I think he's. I will say he's listened to that criticism, and he started to source all of the things that he writes, which makes you trust his stuff more. That is a good thing about Young Yaz. Nowadays, he he does that. He sources literally every single article he talks about, every fucking tweet he talks about. That's that's a W. That's a W. It's only his opinion pieces when he's involved in the product somehow or involved in the behind the scenes, something with Jeff Keighley or whatever, that you have to be a little uneven on. You're like, okay, I don't know if I can fully trust this guy on this. But yeah, I mean, be healthy, have self-reflection, and, and don't think anyone is infallible. Absolutely. Not even me. Don't ever think I'm infallible. I'll always try to give it to you straight, but I will always also try to tell you when I have a bias. Legendary Drops is a good creator. Yeah, I mean, no, there's plenty of good creators, Artosh. But a lot of creators have a bias. And Legendary Drops has biases. Now, there, I'm not saying he's wrong, but he definitely has his biases. And he's not always been honest about his biases. I like him a lot. I've covered a lot of his videos. I think his Warframe video was very, very good. However, even that, he did not really talk about the pay to win aspects of the game that was that was the detraction from that that entire video and and i did make that video covering it and everything and i'll put that up at some point i've not put that one up yet but yeah like there, there's there's definitely proclivity uh, proclivities to everyone but yeah legendary drops is in general a very good creator absolutely artosh i i agree with that i agree with that but yeah the game was in horrible shape as of 18 months ago before release. Yeah. Not even monetization, no right. onboarding, right. most content not even there. The game was in such bad shape at that <laughs> point that they spent the budget of it again in urgent outsourcing to get the game finished. Yep. From all of these different angles over an 18 this month period. This is insane. Period. Internally, the game was considered part of the future of PlayStation with heavy cross-media references yep. and a system of toxic positivity surrounding it that that didn't allow anyone to meaningfully change the course of the game. Right. Because if you're if the people at the top truly believe in something, you're you know, you're not going to be able to do much about that, I don't think, from the trenches. So I thought people would be interested in that. And I uh, just wanted to throw that out there that yeah, they re Star Wars really apparently or I'm sorry, Star Wars. Sony really saw this as a Star Wars like project for them like the potential yeah to and now it makes it's because they saw stars in their eyes that's why star wars more like stars in their fucking eyes sense yeah not only why they spent so much money on it but why they bought the team so there are people there and to me it's unclear who exactly the people are i know some of the names i don't want to get too deep into that because so, a lot of the things i learned were off the record but obviously this is on background um and it's like, mm -hmm. yeah, now it makes a little more sense. You spent, and by the way, the $400 million not included in how much it cost to buy the team. Oh my God, what? It gets worse? Wait, how does this number always get worse, guys? Three weeks ago, we thought it was $100 million. Just five minutes ago, we thought it was $400 million, period. And now, we are realizing it's $400 million Plus whatever it cost to buy the company. The actual acquisition was another, what? 20 million? 30, 40, 50? What is the number? We don't know. 170 people, viable product that they think is viable, which isn't, it's an alpha. They would be talking about... Oof. Should I run that number? Hold on. Hold on. Do you guys know what the term EBITDA is? So I I, I work in acquisition, and we, we've, we I've done acquisition before. So let me let me bring up what EBITDA means. 
EBITDA is a way to look at the value of a company to be able to figure out, can it be found? I mean, we don't know. Vitez, maybe, maybe at some point. We've been covering the entire project for a while though. How are you doing, Vitez? Welcome to stream, my friend. Been on for a solid four hours plus. Lots of love, my friend. Hope you're having a great night. Welcome, welcome. We did some Space Marine gameplay. Um, all big companies right now. Hello, I like money. What made you want to create more generic games which are live service in an oversaturated money uh, market money? Well, that's the thing. True, but we can break that down. If cost to make God of War Ragnarok, 200 million, they could have made two God of War Ragnaroks. They could have made two and a half Spider-Mans. They could have made two and a half Alan Wakes, Alan Wake 2s. All of those are viable products that would make a lot more money. Shit, they could have put it in the fucking lottery and made more money. Like, <laughs> straight up. They could have invested that money into the S&P 500 and made way more money. So the fact that they did this, it's not because of money. It's because they're fucking dumb. In my opinion. But yeah. Uh, okay, anyways, going back to what I was saying... Um, EBITDA is called, er, is, it's called EBITDA, it's shortened earnings before tax, it's our interest, taxes, and amortization. It's a measure of company's profitability used by investors to talk about how much they are willing to buy a company for. So you can buy via a base number, you can also buy via formula. And uh, so the formula is net income plus interest plus taxes and amortization, and usually... You buy a um, a company for EBITDA times two, EBITDA times three. So considering that, the, obviously there's no net income, but interest taxes and amortization, that they can absolutely formula that out. And I would estimate probably $50 million. Considering that they're a company with 170 employees. 170 employees is a lot of people working for a company, guys. That is a lot of people. So if you're using EBITDA to talk about future profits and stuff, yeah, I could estimate another $50 million for the cost tacked on top of the $400 million. So really, guys, $450 million. And this that's only a detail you'd be able to get from me. I, don't, I haven't seen anyone else talk about EBITDA for sure. Uh, so yeah, there you go. A little detail for Cat Corgi. Um, so yeah, biggest. So Concord is Sony's biggest released game by budget to right. date, so far. And it is the biggest loss that they've ever had, so far as a company on a project before. Yeah, yeah. And you know, like I said, I think they can do better. I think they can do better. I think they can. I think they can hit the $500 million mark. I genuinely do. I I, th I think they deserve it, guys. I, I don't I don't want to dance on the grave of a company, except I fuck them. I, I do. I'll, I'll say it how it is. Sony has wasted over a billion fucking dollars at this point. We thought it was in the hundreds of millions, but considering just Concord costed $400 million, uh, big gamble, double down. Yeah, exactly. I think they can hit a billion, guys. I think they can, you know, shit, man. F fast forward five years, Vapen. If they have the same executive staff, the people surrounding freaking Jim Ryan, and I guess this Herman Holtz uh, freaking idiot uh, or whatever, uh, they they can absolutely hit a billion dollars wasted in, in a single project. I, I sincerely believe in them. Never underestimate the level of of a uh, a person's fuck up absolutely it can always get worse it can always get worse let's look at some uh, other aspects of this so the mighty keith is a big creator on youtube uh doesn't believe in the cost people said concord cost 200 million and eight years to make then this sounds insane it does sound insane if you don't know how money works to be fair but that's right 
Um, and very hard for me to believe that any sales cost numbers from games and movies without evidence from the company. I don't know why he doesn't believe these numbers. These numbers are sourced, first of all. Second of all, this guy did really good work. This These numbers are not correct, though. So 150 employees at roughly 100K per totally, uh, and totally number, it'd be 15 million. It's not right. This is 170. So it's more 17 million. And this is per year, per year, $200 million. And, and so on and so forth. H healthcare, you know, all those things. Absolutely. You are completely right. So when you look at this number, you have to talk about things like this. And that's when this number makes more sense. And that's when the number gets more and more egregious. Studio opened six years ago. Well, they were working on it for eight. So, I mean, like if you're arguing semantics, it's, we're just giving context. Bro, we are giving context on the estimate. Read the context. This is this is why Twitter is a dog shit website. Any fucking idiot can go on and put on their useless bullshit information and not pay attention to any context whatso fucking ever and muddy the waters of clear information. This guy gave really good clear information. Not 100% right, but you know, the thought is in the right place. And he gave a lot of context that people would, would need. I'm going to give this a uh, comment a like. He did a really good job. And this, this freaking idiot. Oh, it wasn't eight years ago. It was six years ago. All right. What the fuck did that change? Not much. It actually makes the, con the context of the estimate even better. Because it's a ramp up period as well. And so on and so forth. Yeah, there's lots of things that can change on this number. But we're giving context why 200 million makes any sense whatsoever. Beyond that, this does have repercussions. Not enough, though. Concord Game Director has stepped down as staff Sony owned Firewalk with fate, await their fate. Their fate is simple. They're going to be dead. Like, guys, Firewalk is dead. And frankly, considering the problems with the company and everything, I will dance on their grave. They fucking deserve it. I'll just say it. You don't have a $250 million fuck up before the game even comes out when it's an early alpha and not have serious issues with the entire fucking company. I'm sorry. Look, does every dev deserve it? No. I'm not saying every dev deserves it. But at some point, you call a spade a spade and they in general deserve to be put in the fucking trash. That it is what it is. I'm sorry. Not every animator deserves it, no. But the general shape of the company, let's say a solid 60% of the company, if 60% of the company deserves to be put in the trash can, it deserves to be in the trash can. I blame decision makers. On some level, Shorolashi, in general, I would agree with you. But keep in mind, this is a toxically positive environment where you are not allowed to say that the character is animated like dog shit. This character is never going to sell a skin because it's fucking fat and it's ugly. You're not allowed to say that. And when you're not allowed to say that, that means the entire company is rotten to the core. That is facts. I have come across companies like this in my work. I consulted for companies like this. Do you know what the answer is anytime you're in a situation where 60% of the company is fucking dog shit? Guys, do you know, do you know how to save that company? you sell the company off. You're like, you know what? You're going to sell it for parts at that point because there's no fixing this shit. Like, it's dead. Unless it's like, you know, massive waste. You can still make the product with 40% of the people. But the chances that happens is like snowflakes in hell. That has happened. I've worked on that. I've done that. That is not the general situation of what happens in that situation. I said situation twice, sorry. When 60% of the company is trash, you put the entire thing in the trash can and, and you sell it for parts 
and then you try to create a new company later on that can do the same thing better and not have the issues at its core. Because at that point, the entire fucking thing is trash. I'm like, Alashi, I'm not saying this as, you know, being harsh or mean or anything like that. It's facts. Like this, this is how things work in the real world. And, and I think game makers have had this toxic positivity in their situation for so long, they forgot how fucking real life works. Like they really have forgotten. And, and the problem is that anytime a game company, the executives and the staff as well, forget how real life works, they decide to put that cost onto us, Alashi. Because of Hyena's $100 million failure, we almost lost Total War Warhammer 3 and the Total War series as a whole. We would never have gotten one of those games ever if Warhammer 3 did not have that massive turnaround, okay? So, because at that point it becomes a throw the baby out with the bathwater, right? And, 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 and the, that's the problem. Triage is incredibly important. If you are, God forbid, having cancer. This is actually a big issue nowadays. Because if you're, if you're, God forbid, having cancer. And you are faced with the decision of cutting out the cancer. You cut out the fucking cancer. And in this situation, when you buy a studio for $50 million and they've had $2 million, $200 million worth of failure and you spend another $200 million to increase that failure, that entire thing is a cancer. Like, that's what it is. Uh, when you don't want to put yourself in the shoes of these heroes, this design issue? Yeah, exactly. It's a complete design issue. Yeah, everyone on the design team deserves to be fired. Absolutely. Everyone on the game balance team deserves to be fired. Everyone on the on the team that stated that this game is not dog shit in any way, shape, or form, whether they're required to or not, deserves to be fired. Because if you're not willing to stand on business, you don't belong in the fucking industry.